Ring, 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 ring. Hello? Ring, Hello? ring. Hello? Hello, Jackson? Oh, Skazone, it's oh, young Jackson. Hello, Jackson. Hey. Ah. You want to do the talking today? Oh, let's do the talking today, yeah? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll switch to the camera phone. Okay, me too. Okay. Woo! Oh. There he is. Yeah. That's how we do, that's how we do it today. That is. That yeah. is the way. How is how is Dr. Skazone today? Great. Can you tell is there anything different about me? You got a haircut. Yeah. You and... have. Uh, let's take a look. I mean, you have the blanket on you. Yeah. You wait, yeah. is that a tattoo on your neck? No. No, but I did hit and bang my forehead on the bathtub and got a third eye. <laughs> but uh, no, I figured out panoramic view. Whoa. Yeah. So so now we can have equal size squares. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm sure the, all the uh, the fan base has been really struggling with that in the comments, eh? Probably. Yeah. Well, but Peter's getting with the times. That's the times, and we're talking about times today, are we? Yes, we are. We're talking about a bit about the the times of now and how the times of now, what some people like to call the new world, the new paradigm, the new shift. And then we can even relate it back to growing up when Peter was a young Peter. And, yep. and we can talk about the times of what that looked like versus the times of younger Jackson versus the now. Mm. And then even yep. our journeys to get there too. Yep. So diving into it let's talk about let's talk a little bit about the now peter how do you what how have you found that life has been changing for you in the now and the now that you kind of see even with like the new world or like with consciousness shifting even within yourself how like i don't know how are you how are you looking at that now how are you feeling into it mm, i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah um, uh, the word innocence comes to mind um there was so much more in innocence before the internet mm. that's funny how they they both kind of sounds innocence internet innocence internet what's my password i forget innocence internet you want me to make a beat <laughs> yeah, might as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, there's so much to say because, uh, what was the question? <laughs> Talk about the new world. The new world, like new Columbus? World. <laughs> <laughs> the Columbus? The Columbus yeah. of consciousness. <laughs> Well, that's kind of how the internet feels to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the internet to me feels like Christopher Columbus took took an internet service providing slave ship and came and colonized my mind and took it hostage. Mm. Right? And gave it all kinds of viruses. I didn't ask for that. I was happy living my little life. And then all of a sudden, this big, huge internet thing comes in with fucking Captain Zuckerberg. We can, he's like the Christopher Columbus of the damn internet. Colonizing everyone, starting wars. You know? I hope we tear down his statue one day. And, you know, oh, Peter's an old bitter man. Uh-oh, progress alert, right? But I just, I say I'm scared. And, of course, I say that in a Scazzoni kind of way, which is obviously a varying percentage of sarcasm. But, the, of course, we're in a leadership group where, group where we we focus on faith over fear, right? Yes. So I'm not going to give into that fear of what's going to happen in the next 10 years and um, watching uh, our children go through this hyper fast 
adaptation to AI, going through um, depression, anxiety, all these things that we're learning to heal with breath. So it's just, it's really scary to, um, you know, when thinking about your question of what, you know, I'm 44 now <clears throat> and you're 21. late 20s early 20s yeah i never know how old you are <laughs> you know because you do you know speak sometimes quite beyond your years and it's you know it's it's very uh it's remarkable it's nice to see um uh but you do have that innocence still so right mm -hmm. but you have facial hair so <laughs> anyways it's you're confusing <laughs> <laughs> i'm like the unicorn so yeah well yeah. i mean it's like i feel i feel like it's good because even like with i'll say like the age of like how the talking is going i don't know we we go up and down all the time because you can you can bring like that you can bring your wisdom and, and your perspective that mm. can only be gained from experience and only be gained from age but also we can we can go up and down and we can we can we can talk about dr scudoni guru devon and yep. uh yep. Scuzzabots and all, so yep, many other topics where we there's can just... a new character coming in too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's Dr. Scazzoni and then Coach Scazzone. Coach Scazzone. I'm very so excited Scazzone. to see his entrance. So, because I'm, I'm worried about people suing me for pretending I'm a doctor. Ah, so I'm going to go with Coach Scazzone and I'll basic, then I'll get sued by the uh, Italian community for imitating italian stereotypes but what i'm going to do is dress up as kind of a sopranos mafia guy with a velour track suit and a chain and a um uh, a, a tank top you know yeah and i'm gonna have a whistle and, mm. I, and i'm gonna walk around town like a coach you know dressed like a coach but also italian kind of you know leisure suit no leisure well not leisure suit, you know what i'm saying right yes yeah, not in the. Yeah. So, so Coach Gazon's going to walk around town. I'm going to stand on the street corner with my shades on, you know, checking out, you know, you know, doing a little bit of Skylark and a little bit of girl watching. And, um, and then if when I see people that are really badly mouth breathing, <laughs> I'm going to blow my whistle and I'm going to hand out, you know, um, penalties and, and then, and that's going to open up conversation for, yeah okay you, you want to do some coaching so mm. yeah i'm gonna I, i've always cringed i think it's fair to say that uh, the, the word life coach the term life coach is uh is a cringy term because of there's a lot of people doing it that maybe um need some coaching themselves from what i've seen it's a it's a meme stereotype it gets laughed at a lot like that nelson I don't know. Uh, what's that town near Winslow? Winlaw memes. Have you seen that on I have not. Facebook or Instagram? Okay, it's all just laughing at the the mountain kind of older white person life coach and all the little cliches. <laughs> Anyhow, now that I've gotten my negativity out of me, let's have a little sip. Yes, hydrate. Cleanse the palate. Cleanse the palate. Let Peter's negative talk go away. And uh, I really want to step in, drop in, show up as as a coach, because, you know, part of my fear of the, the future is that the government, yes, that exists and they do bad things. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, you know, we can go into these wonderful circles and magical spaces, but the government still exists out there. Um, and I have a tough time with those two worlds, but um, one thing that they're doing is clamping down. I think it's called Bill C-36 on natural health care and um, any sort of alternative health care. So vitamins, herbs, um, you know, massage, acupuncture, body work. Uh, I don't know how far they're going to extend that, but basically there's now a very strict uh, governing body that says you have to go through all kinds of um, approvals and uh, bureaucracies and um, pay. And you have to be in there. You have to be there, their bitch. You can't just be this alternative health practitioner that does what they want. 
uh, that the, the government has the right to step in and tell you what you can and cannot say as health advice. Uh, and their appointee doesn't even have any in, in knowledge of what you're doing. They're just a government worker that says, well, I'm going to shut you down unless you pay this or do that. And what I think it is, is they're uh, trying to take away our sovereignty and personal autonomy to heal ourselves. I'm not going to go down the conspiracy rabbit hole of the pandemic stuff, but obviously that's a part of the way I'm thinking right now. Um, but what I wanted to say is that what is some form of professionally doing uh, breath work and facilitating that will and, and they're gonna watch this <laughs> so they're gonna like i don't know why i'm saying this <laughs> but uh but i want to do something that can't be fucked with so if you know if we're just, our teacher is a meditation instructor it says on his thing mm -hmm. right can you take that away like or if i'm to say i'm a breathing uh like a coach i'm seeing a kinesiologist right now that our teacher referred me to who was wonderful i've told you on the last podcast uh, and he calls himself a coach and so i like the idea of instead of you know i'm very hung up on words we all know that um what do i call myself and so i think even though it's coach is kind of cringy with all the people doing the life coachy stuff um i think i'm gonna i'm gonna invent this character lean into it as a kind of a comedian slash uh, coach like the old school gym teacher you know he's a little politically incorrect right <laughs> you know this this the old gym teacher kind of archetype yeah and he's maybe a bit of italian in there and a uh, bit of an attitude bit of a gangster you know he's got a gold chain you know so operates kind of outside the law but helps people makes mm -hmm. people laugh and, and 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 the umbrella of comedy i think is what i'm hoping to use as my my mary poppins umbrella you know that's mm -hmm. kind of like my magical shield um that's also i can fly with and click my heels and sing chim chimney chim chimney chim chim chiru if you tell me i can't do breath work i'll say fuck you okay <laughs> Let's get something. Let's get something. But I'm yeah. afraid, Jackson. I'm afraid. So what was the question? It was, it was all about like the new world. And I feel like you answered it pretty well. To like seeing like how you feel going into it. And yes, and like world. and like and you also talked about how you want to show up within it and even like the subcategory of say coach schizone. Mm. And 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 showing up in that in that way, I I wasn't aware of of C thirty six. We don't need to talk a lot Nobody a lot is. about it now. Yeah. But I Nobody guess knows about this. Yeah. Yeah. But it's interesting how you even talked about like the way that you that you want to go up with it, and like going from the coach term and the coach terminology hmm. instead of going yeah. as, as like a teacher. I'm this facilitator. I'm this yeah. like. Yeah, it's in, yeah. In, but it's like that. I just wanna, I just wanna be there to help. It's I'm yeah. just gonna show up with me. Yeah, yeah. and it's very mm -hmm. interesting as well. Like when you when you talk about your perspective, I feel like you like especially as as you've grown, you've seen the world change a lot, and you've seen a lot of things. Like you lived in the age of no internet for yeah. probably half your life, yeah. and then and then to go or even more than that. So to go into transition from that to now is, is very different but with me i i lived in the age of the internet for like i wasn't even done high school yet i wasn't even yeah. done middle school and the internet was a thing so let's get this out of the way uh, when was your first interaction with the internet was it at e getting an email or signing into a social media what was the first thing you did on the internet probably dude probably probably okay in the third grade i remember we would have like computer time and what we did is i remember I, we had to make a powerpoint of our early life but we just did like a bunch of pictures leading up into then i remember mm -hmm. there was that but it was probably what we would do is we would go on the computer lab and in there we would like go and we'd either like play little games like do little math games do little programs maybe do like some literary English stuff, 
So my probably first exposure was like when you're as a kid and you'd go to the computer cool. lab and you would uh, like do little things there. So probably mm -hmm. like third grade for actually maybe second grade, second yeah. to third grade. Do, do you still have your first, do you still have your first email address? I do. You do? Yeah, <laughs> I do. I don't really cool. use it. I've transitioned no. to a better, a better sounding one. <laughs> yeah. But I, I have it. Yeah. Uh, cool. I, yeah. Yeah. What about you? Do you have your first email address? I, I don't know. I haven't okay. tried to check, log into it. It was a Hotmail address. Ah. Yeah. And it was in, uh, it was in, uh, oh shit, I think it was in the 90s. Oh, anyway, but uh, yeah, yeah, hotmail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very interesting as well, like when you talk about your perspective grow, growing up versus like, like mine or even yours now, because I feel like even with you, in like the role of like a father now as well too there's a lot more thought about the future because you're you're like you have to think about your daughter you have yeah. to think what does the future of your family look like and like i'm young i'm young jackson i i still live with my parents right now it's yeah. much much different area and like even thought process of what's going through my mind versus yeah. what's going through yours it's interesting one of the things how like you talked about showing up as a coach one of the, and like and like your Italian coaching perspective with with the whistle and it's for me a per, a perspective for a role that I'm really looking at fitting into is is the role of a creator and the role of like I'm not there to necessarily I don't know if I'm necessarily there to go and say like tell you everything what to do like health advice and all, and all of that. I can I can maybe help and give you guidance with the breath, but I want to be that creator of like of like community, that creator mm -hmm. of space, mm -hmm. that creator of just giving like you said like there's the government and then there's like those beautiful spaces. And I want to be like pushing for those spaces and pushing mm -hmm. for like more people to have the awareness of those spaces. Because like I I, ta I remember talking last podcast how I was gonna do that connection party and it was great I had a lot of people over and there were some people I even met or who were there and they're they're like this type of thing doesn't happen very often and this really? is a this is a beautiful thing to have it was nice we just had everyone over they everyone just had question prompts between each other and then they just had time to connect and talk with each other they had like mm -hmm. a road that they could go down however they could stray off however they wanted. And it was, and I'm, I feel very called and I feel very alive to go and keep creating those spaces or keep creating like those areas to where people like, they don't have to go to the bar to connect with buddies. They mm. don't have to just do a bunch of, they just don't have to drink until they, they don't remember what happened the next day. They don't have mm. to load themselves with drugs. Like they can just chat and hang out and have mm. a good time or they can just, they can just have a space to just go and do something different. Mm. And I feel like that's an area, that's where I feel very in alignment with right now. Mm. Just keeping to create those those spaces. And I feel like even with going into the future, because I feel like it's like it's just young Jackson, I feel very like I want to help create I want to help shape the future that I see. And mm. I feel like through creating those spaces. It will allow me to curate kind of what I'm seeing or the people that I'm around, and that will help influence my reality and like what I'm seeing on my day to day. Like, obviously, everyone has to deal with the government in some form. Everyone has to pay taxes. Everyone has to get food. Everyone has to get like whatever. Mm -hmm. and, but if I can create the area that I'm around most of the time, I think that is really going to help me with my way of showing up in the world. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's something I'm really looking to forward to. Even like, even since this breathwork journey has started, the, the, the people that I hang around and the, the, the places that I put myself in are drastically different. Mm -hmm. They're very, I mean, mm -hmm. I also have matured a bit as well too. I feel like this course has really taken me and it's, it's allowed me to like 
really like one of the things i thought about with light force is like because our teacher with jeff wants us to really be on top of our shit like he wants us to really be on top of it like so we can really show up for others and that we're solid in ourselves i'm like damn like i really got i i, I can't just like so people say how like 20s are for wasting time or blah 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 like whatever you hear on social media i'm like i gotta sharpen up but i can still be young jackson too but it's like mm -hmm. i gotta i gotta like sharpen so i'm so i can like i can help myself and i can be there for myself too <clears throat> so that's been that's been a, a fun perspective to to go down and to like be like okay i gotta step up <laughs> and that's mm. been nice mm. good man well i'm glad you have such a positive outlook it's refreshing so i think that's your gift to the world is positivity <clears throat> mm, thank yeah. you my gift is negativity. <laughs> <laughs> we balance it out here. <laughs> yeah. But I think there's a there's a bit of both that you need to have. Like even because of like my positivity, I feel like sometimes I just I might not look at things like the way they are because I might look at okay. it from from that inflated like oh positive like da, 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 da. The light. Yeah. <laughs> I've I've definitely been there and I need to and I need to catch myself. Or I think it's important for me to have different connections or relationships with different people who can allow me to see both both the dark and the light because mm -hmm. i might i might just gloss over it or i might be like this is the way and this is the light and it's like no there's so much more and you're like what and then then you kind of like gotta see so that's it i might not want to have those those talks all the time because it might be difficult for like my ego to be like what i think all the time might not necessarily be the way but I think it's good to have to have a bit of both. Yeah. 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 So with going into this too, Peter, um, how is your journey like when coming up in in this new world? What is what has been one of your things or even like with breath work, Peter, like going from there or maybe the transitions? One of the things I know I've noticed in my life is there's as things have came up. There's also a lot of things that have had to go. And I know mm -hmm. in one of your most recent Instagram videos, you talked about mm -hmm. letting all the stuff go so you can just receive. Yeah. So so do you want to talk a little bit about on your journey? What's it what's it's been like to as you've learned to like I don't know if upgrades the word, but mm -hmm. if you when you've learned to like come up into this new paradigm or this new like where you're at now. What has it been like letting go of things and and bring so that way you can make more space in for the new? Hmm. Well, you know, there's the kind of there's the experiment where or the, the expression where you rip a band aid off or you slowly pull it off painfully, right? Or, or there's yeah. the clean break and there's the messy break. So, what do you think I chose? <laughs> well yeah. for the band-aid probably sometimes it's the slow approach but sometimes you just have to eventually just yank it off but i feel yeah. like with the bone break i think you chose the messy approach yeah well it's all quite a mess to be honest um, but um with me there's a lot of i wouldn't say wavering or waffling there's just a very um dramatic um uh, like like I, i'm seeing waves crashing against rocks right now and just a lot of backsplash you know um so maybe i've been trying to learn this kinesiologist helping me to really to wheel my 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 symbols when i see things in my head and i'm trying to explain just really go into what what my brain is what what, what this image is and to to wheel that and uh, find the symbology in that so i'm seeing waves crashing and breaking against this rocky shore slowly eroding it and um that's making me think that well i can say for sure that my process of letting my past things go that hold me back in order to receive the new things I have not wanted to let go. And even when I have wanted to let go, 
I felt so empty and lost when I did let go that I picked up again, you know? So, so there's, there's this impatience in me that doesn't, and this, this doubt and skepticism that once I've gone, okay, I, I'm, I'm putting down all my spray paint. I'm not going out tagging much anymore, doing graffiti. I'm not spending like going, flying to another country, spending all my time wandering around looking for walls and people to paint with and do graffiti that has no reward other than just street cred in the underground graffiti community, which is great. You connect with a lot of new friends. You have real adventures. You break the law. You you feel this uh, vitality that I find so many art practices have lacked from for me in, in going into train yards or running around cities and climbing things and to running from people and meeting strangers and like all this romance of, of that graffiti world. It, it was a lot to do with, um, you know, an addiction to the rush of it and to the image of being a, a badass. And um, every time I would put that down because I saw it holding me back from being who I really wanted to be. I was so from from two decades of relying on that as my, you know, validity and credibility and self-confidence and community and come into these nice circles and spaces with all these, you know, nice loving people. And I go like, where's the grit? Where's the edge? It's all too. Ah. And I couldn't accept the light. I was still hooked on that old darkness. And I still love the graffiti culture. And, and I have so much respect for people that give their lives to that. But as a father, as someone who wants to benefit my community and be of service and become the highest version of myself, that was not getting me there, dude. So I've done this, the same thing with alcohol for the last 10 years. I quit. And okay, I give up. It's too boring. I go back and do it again. And then I quit again and back and forth and back and forth. In the process, people get sick of it. Oh, yeah, you're quitting again. It's like someone who's drinking coffee and goes, yeah, I just quit coffee. Fuck no, you did. It doesn't. You know, you, you, it's like, yeah, whatever. People get sick of hearing that shit. It just becomes meaningless. The other thing that's annoying is, um, you know, people never know whether you're part of the group or not. Like, you know, are you coming painting or not? Or. Like, do I follow your work or are you just going to abandon it again? And so these, these, you know, followings and connections, uh, it's like I'm seeing, okay, I'm having another vision of a tree. And you're taking this tree and you're just smacking the tree, like, you know, kicking it, smacking it, pushing it back and forth. Branches are breaking. Roots are getting torn up. But the tree's still there, Right. We have kicked the shit out of it. And so that's kind of what this process is. Instead of a nice hard prune, a nice cut off a branch, you know, or dig the tree up and repot it and lose a bunch of roots. I've just basically like, you know, wrestled this poor tree until it looks like Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Right. So that's that's kind of what <laughs> with, with with letting trying to let go of the addictions, the alcohol, letting go of the graffiti life, um, just endlessly pouring into a bottomless pit that, you know, like you stop painting for a year. Forget about it. No one's going to give a shit who you are or how long you've been painting for. You got to be out on the street every weekend, at least tagging stuff or else you lose all your so like. <laughs> anyway that's another story but that has been the main thing that has been hard for me to let go and that for 10 years i've been going back and forth i have start again stop again start again stop again you know alienates people frustrates people and it also um it, it doesn't get me anywhere right 
Because it's like two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, once I guess it gets you a little ways. But uh, yeah, it does. It was a process. It was a long, messy process. Mm. And obviously addiction and alcoholism, all that kind of stuff that goes without saying that that's a physical thing that, you know, the mammalian brain, the, the limbic system and all that is wired to think that it needs a substance. So that's understandable. Um, other than those things, though, uh, I think my addiction, and we do this a lot in our course, is talking about the addictive behavior patterns that we need to let go in order to step forward, right? And so me being addictive to talking shit, right? And, you know, just that negativity, you know, feeding off of that, like what uh, I guess Eckhart Tolle calls the pain body. Or what our Paul Levy's calls uh, Watiko, you know that that darkness in me that loves to be fed by like, oh, life coaches, yeah, fuck, what a bunch of cheese balls. Like, who am I to say that? But yet I get this fu- this little. I think I think I'm being funny, like making fun of like, how's that? How does that serve me at all? And how does that help me step forward by attacking someone else? So I do that a lot. Low self-esteem, attack myself, and then attack others. So that's been, I think if that was the question we were talking about was, uh, how has it been to try and let go of things? Yeah. 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 Well, I have a question as well, too, that goes in with that. One of the things you talked about is you found it was difficult to show up in those spaces to really Ah. accept the light. And you talked about how with the darkness, like you always just felt like you wanted to cling to the darkness. Do you find with you now, as since you're more on your journey, do you find that you show up in community a little different or you show up with a different perspective or way? Or do you are you do you still feel like it's it's hard for you to accept and receive the light what's that been like it's getting a lot easier yeah a lot easier and now the new thing that it's which eco's filled in a new little thing is now that i can do that easily and feel good now it is kind of flipped it what it has flipped it (laughs) how unspecific is that (laughs) uh the people in my life that are where I was previous in hanging on to the dark and not w- 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 opening to the light, seeing those people in my life that I love uh, resist. That's the new hard part. That's the new judgment. Like now that I've made some progress instead of judging all the other people in the, in the space that are already here, ready to go do the work. They're open to this. Now I'm criticizing the people that were like me that are resisting it. Right. You see what I mean? Yeah. So I'm going like, Oh shit. No, like now I got to go through this process all over again with someone and hold them while they go through this process and god forbid i ever tell them what to do right Mm -hmm. i cannot stand that like i just have to sit there and hopefully if it feels right for them they'll join me on this journey but i think the other scary thing that held me back is that once you're in and you let go of that dark past like there's that new empty open lonely uncertain space where you go well i can't turn back now and and all these people i don't want to leave them behind that i love but how do you have a a life with someone who's not on that same path i just got my hair cut my my hairdresser i love her she's on this path as well she's done incredible healing and she was talking about how Um, in a relationship like she's been single for a while Uh, she doesn't know how she would get into a relationship with someone who doesn't have god as the center and the foundation of their lives Mm. you know and so i'm i'm looking at my friendships and relationships and going like 
well, I love these people and they don't want to talk about God or, or do this work of, you know, self realizing and going into find what's holding us back and finding ways to releasing it. And like that upward spiral and not just content to just accept, Oh, I feel like shit, but that's how it is. No, like, let's do something about this. Let's be like all we came here to be like, how do you, so this is the new thing to answer to your question, uh, how to be with those people when they still have to go through that process of letting go of what's holding them back. Cause I can't tell them to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. I know. I know what you mean, Peter. It's, it can be so difficult to watch those people. It feels like you're, you're all like to me when I get a vision of that is it feels like it's say like when people are learning how to swim and there's people who like you know where the shore is you know how to get there and you finally allowed yourself to listen to what the instructor is telling you and learning how to like swim or make your way to the shore and you see your friends who are in the deep end like trying to trying to just keep their head above water and just trying mm-hmm. to exist and they're struggling and it's like you can you can tell them all you want of how yeah. to do the front stroke back stroke breast stroke anything but until they allow themselves to receive that, all you can do is keep swimming to the shore. Yeah. And and you, and you can't drag them with you because they're going to try to bring you in under. And that's what my hairdresser told me. But I, 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 I said, well, maybe part of our path, and this sounds friggin' egotistical as hell, uh, is to be there as like that that rock that of safety that they can somehow flap their you know their (laughs) i'm I'm saying what are those little water wings (laughs) you know like like even though you see them drowning and they won't listen like maybe part of our work that we have to do is learning to just be there and and watch them go through this you know Mm -hmm. yeah i i understand that i under i understand what you're saying and you know what you know it's been to me like to think about that question as well too something that's really been coming up in my life and and is especially trying to be in like a more like creator or leadership role is to lead by example that embodiment Mm -hmm. something that our teacher has preached so much to us that's all we can do, really. That's that's all we can all we can do is show up and do the practices and mm-hmm. do the thing and like but you know what though? When you do see some change in people, it's crazy. Like you want it like a crazy change that I am I'm like kind of cr- like like awe oh, a little bit thinking of it is so my dad is not a very spiritual man. He's mm-hmm. he's open but he's very he's an open man and he, and he likes and he's able to listen to you and and get your perspective but he is set in his ways as well too. Mm-hmm. And he recently did something that kind of shocked me. And it's it's it could be a tiny baby step, but you know what my dad did? Right. You now he wears a crystal around his neck. What? <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" Like Oh, wow. Yeah, like what happened? So they- Here's an example: when they fall, when the resistant ones fall, they fall hard. <laughs> like, no, no, Dad, you can just do some breath work. You don't have to like cover yourself in crystals. Like, no, <laughs> white robe, crystals, the whole deal. So, yeah. like, it wow. it was like one thing that was kind of cool. Like, so I got there's my dad got me this crystal when the Dominican. It's called Larimar. It's the official stone yeah. of the Dominican. And wow. my dad was at a, a rock and gems shop and he got himself a Laramar as well, too. And now he just wow. wears it. It's like it's a tiny one. Like it only goes to about here and he can tuck it under yeah. his shirt and stuff, too. But like it's yeah. a start. It's like it's like, OK, like it's it's pretty cool to see. And it's pretty cool. Or like even, for instance, one of the reasons I personally think I ended up on this path is I have a cousin who got me into Oracle and tarot card reading. She just, every time we had a family get together, there was a group of us cousins. She'd be like, come with us. And all the cousins would go together and she would just bring out her cards. And we'd like, whoa, like Abby's going to read her cards. Abby's going to read her futures. 
Uh-huh. And then it, and then it just kind of got us open to that. And then we did that over like probably two, three years. Mm-hmm. And then in Christmas 2020, she went at, and she, she gave me a deck and she said, you're ready. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then that's what like, it kind of like, she showed that it was okay to do that. And she showed that it was okay to be in that lifestyle. And now yeah. she's like a gypsy. She roams around Canada. She does house sitting. She works at a hippie shop. She does, she'll like just get a jobs at different places. And she kind of lives that lifestyle. But she yeah. showed that it's okay to like live an alternative lifestyle, live mm-hmm. a lifestyle that's not go after high school, go to university, spend your yeah. time there, get a corporate yeah. job. Get a yeah. get a partner, get a house, have kids, happily ever after, like that. So it right. showed that there is the difference, and I feel like that was one of the things that even probed the openness in me to know that like you can do something different, and that is that is okay. And I feel like yeah. it, I feel like as far as like my family is like an umbrella, she kind of like broke the family in. <laughs> mm-hmm. she, was, she was the one who kind of like there was that elephant in the room, and she addressed it. Or there was like that that ice and she broke it. Mm-hmm. And and she really allowed like the rest of the family to be a little bit more open and accepting of it. Mm. So that and that was something that helped me a lot. Because for mm. instance, I'm just doing breath work. I'm not roaming around Canada like a gypsy. And then family's yeah. like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's good. Like you're just breathing. Mm-hmm. And and it's it's been easier for them to accept. And I'm saying mm. there's nothing wrong with her going around Canada like a gypsy. It's just it's what your path looks like, and mm-hmm. it's what and it's what you would you would like to to go from, and mm-hmm. that's and it's very interesting to like even just like lead through that example and just sometimes it, all it takes is someone just to have that one experience or that one thing, and then people can just suddenly open up a little bit more, or suddenly mm. people can just. It's so, but it's been interesting. Like, it's definitely not a fast process. Like, it's so much easier to just pe- tell people, like, look, you should come with me to this breathwork session, or I can do this breathwork thing with you, and then we can do, and it, and it's so much easier to just tell them, like, like, just please, like, do, but, but sometimes there's just that resistance. It's like, no, mm. it's like, no, it's yeah. just like, I'm not ready to take that step. It's like, okay. Yeah. It's like, okay, but then it's, it's sometimes allowing people to like, if if you are ready to take that step and you have, or if you're thinking about it and you have questions, like I can be there. Yeah. And and it's like, like, it's kind of like you talked about like that rock, but it's Mm -hmm. like, but it's like, they can come, they can kind of like peek into the, it's almost like, okay, you've watched SpongeBob, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Think about like Patrick Star, his rock. Think about if it if it was that rock, except it was all made of glass, and we're mm-hmm. like SpongeBob and Patrick running around like blah, 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 like in the bottom, yeah. just having fun, <laughs> and then like the people are like Squidward looking through the glass of the rock, and they're like, "What is this?" And they're yeah. and they're trying to like and they're like peeking, and they can come in, like they can knock and come in if they want. Oh, it's like Sandy Cheeks Aquarium, or like yeah, yeah that's a great way of analogy. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, like, it's a circle. We can do a breath circle in Sandy Cheeks' aquarium. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You could almost say it's like a maloka of the sea. Yeah. yeah <laughs> the the yeah. maloka of SpongeBob. You never hear about psychedelic plants from under the water. So ocean plants, psychedelics from the sea, do you? Not really. Isn't there like a fungi that grows at like the bottom? Well, I think it's probably because it's, hard, it's difficult to, to probably get. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I feel like there's there like must be something that dolphins and whales trip on, right? Oh because yeah, probably. Red jaguars trip out and bear, bears trip out. A lot of animals trip. Sloths do too. Yeah. So what are the whales and the uh, the, the dolphins are definitely high. <laughs> so I, I wonder what they're doing. <laughs> but um I like that sponge let's take that SpongeBob analogy a little further. Um Okay. So I guess Patrick's a mouth breather, right? Yes. You can see his chin. <laughs> yeah. And SpongeBob is he loves bubbles, right? They love blowing bubbles, don't they? And mm-hmm. they're catching butterflies and jellyfish. jellyfish. So maybe the diaphragms, that's just it. The SpongeBob SquarePants is actually a show about breathwork. So yeah, they're running around with their 
with their big nets, butterfly nets, trying to catch the diaphragms, trying to harness the power of the diaphragm because SpongeBob's respiratory system has become like a sponge and it, it, uh, it needs more structure, right? Because mm. he's trying to tell the kids, look, kids, if you're underwater, you're going to have to have a really good lung capacity, right? First of all, right? You're going to go deep. You're going to get the mammalian dive reflex. You're going to start tripping out. You're going to see squirrels wearing um, glass helmets and as starfishes that wear um, shorts. And, um, you know, there's going to be a restaurant that sells uh, Krabby Patties, right? You know, there's going to be a, a really stingy uh, Newfoundlander um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, um, named Mr. Krabs, who's got a daughter who's a whale. So there's lots of psychedelic stuff happening, um, you know, and SpongeBob's trying to teach kids to uh, use the diaphragms, harness the power with their net, their neural net, their myofacial net. Uh, and uh, and uh, then Patrick, Patrick is kind of, he's so stoned, right? He's lying underneath a stone and he's in a star shape. So he's the... The Vitruvian man, is it? I don't you know, know what the, that word means. The, the, the star man in the circle that Leonardo drew, or um, I guess so. What other symbology is there? The uh, starfish? No, just in the SpongeBob show. Any other? Uh, well, Squidward, oh, Squidward, right? So mm -hmm. if you're not breathing well, um, you will end up like Squidward and hating everyone, right? You'll just be negative mm -hmm. and you'll be green. And you'll be selfish. You'll paint portraits of yourself and play the clarinet by yourself and uh, just be a hater. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then there's Plankton. Plankton's trying to... Plankton. Plankton's the guy on the outside who wants to, he wants to come in. But but he's but he's being so like rude about it. He's trying to disrupt everything. He's like they're they're like you can come in. You can come just get a Krabby Patty. You can come do jellyfish or whatever. Yeah. But he's like, I want to take it away. I want, I want it all for so, myself. So that's Plankton's like me when I first started coming to ceremonial circles, mm. right? Hold, holding on to my darkness and not believing that people really were there for me and, and support me and love me. But I didn't want to accept that love, right? Mm. So that's a Plankton, a Plankton personality. And it's so small really mm -hmm. hey yeah. you know such a tiny little thing the plankton yeah oh. it's the small Interesting. Self. yeah and then and then even like his his computer girlfriend is like him it's just him oh, it's oh. him talking with his ego and him just feeding yeah. his ego and staying stuck in that ego cycle wow man i had no idea bikini bottom was so deep we today we just made it yeah or That's today we, we found yeah. we found the symbology. Uh -huh. That's why I believe in doing this practice. You know, even if nobody watches, it doesn't matter. The fact that we're recording ourselves and putting ourselves out into the world for anyone to see. I don't know how the heck they'd find this. But in the act of doing that, it is my belief that we find these little nuggets of to wheel of, of reflective wisdom of symbology that is looking at bikini bottom as a, a way of understanding the work we're doing with breathwork studies and, and all of that, you know, cold mm -hmm. bay, the ocean dipping. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so I, I don't think we would have had this, this conversation if we hadn't have said, let's do a podcast. <laughs> yeah I, it, it, would, it would have not happened now this is why i, I, I do this this for these little moments yeah 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 the little moments are special they're very special. very they're very special and they're very it's like a reminder it's like yeah like you're saying it's like this is why you do it it's like yeah like this is <laughs> this is what it can be mm -hmm. this is what it can be yeah, it's so amazing to have these and to like just go down like that rabbit hole. Just go down there and like put yourself out there too. I used to have 
I, I went, so like talking about putting ourselves out there even too, that was something that was very interesting to me. I had so much, when I first started, I'll call it like my personal development journey, which was like before spirituality, but like when I started to really like put myself out there, I like, and I started putting out Instagram content. That was so fucking scary. So oh, like scary. Pardon? Like dip lessons, you mean? No, this is pre lake dip lessons. This was Sunday sit down, Jackson. This is poetry on Instagram caption, Jackson. Oh, wow. This was a song of the day, Jackson, where I where I people would send me songs and I would rank them. This was and this was like in high school. This started in high school and then it and then after high school it went it went into like badminton stuff. But mm -hmm. Oh, during this time, I remember the first video I ever put myself out on Instagram talking was I was sad one day and I watched a Jim Carrey motivational video and mm -hmm. I did a, a 15 second summary of it on my story mm -hmm. and I was fucking scared shitless. Like the next day coming to school, I was like, are they going to judge me? Are, oh, they, yeah. are they are they like, what are they going to say? And I was so much resistance, but sometimes mm -hmm. you just have to get those reps in. Like people like I think I had like maybe five people say comments like you did a video that like, why would you do that? And I was like, because I felt like it. They're like, OK, cool. And then that was it. Mm. That, that was it. And then and then I just went from there and, and then it allowed me to do other stuff like this. And then like those things that we talked about. And now it's just like we're doing this. We're just putting it out there and we're just showing up out there. We're putting ourselves out there. And it's just like. Sometimes that's all you got to do. And sometimes you've got to get your reps in like before, like I wanted to do a podcast since I've been in high school, but I never mm -hmm. actually pulled the trigger until you said, let's do a podcast. I'm like, okay, there was no, like, we need to make this grandiose logo. We need to go oh, yeah. and make a script. We need to go and, and like have a name beforehand. We need to like find guests who like, it was just like, okay, like, Let's think of some topics we want to talk about and then let's hit record and post it and see what happens. I guess we should have a guest. We could. I have some people who I think would might might want to come on sometimes. Okay. And we can ask the group if anyone wants to. Oh, we could get everyone from Light Force. <laughs> yeah, but I do have a logo. I have got a logo uh, for us. Cool. Yeah. That's pretty yeah, awesome. It's, it's it's a peacock with two heads, right? And one heads you, and one heads me. Cool. Pretty 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 obvious. Pretty simple. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. That's really awesome, Peter. Thank you for doing that. Well, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's just an idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. But the thing is, it's like sometimes you just got to do it. And it can be messy. Well, it can be whatever it needs to be, but you just got to do it. If, if we do a good enough job on this podcast then and get some fans, then one of the fans can do the, the logo. Yeah. Because all, all they'd have to do is screenshot us, go on to Procreate, trace us, and then vote, like cut and paste that onto a, I almost said a turkey. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, peacock. Peacock, peacock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. So we'll wait, we'll wait for the we'll wait to get a fan that can do it for us. Yeah. Yeah. We'll wait for that feeling. Yeah. And then we'll get a someone that can do a theme song for us too. Right? Yeah. 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 That'll be that'll be cool the day that yeah. happens. And then if you want to do the merch, you can do the merch. I'm I'm sick of merch. <laughs> <laughs> Peter's merch out. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so we can have like a peacock with like and we with like the breath coming out of the middle, or the peacock breathing, and from the breath is is like our faces, or 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 it's like Kaplabati, <laughs> or it's like pranayama. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. That's just I'm just thinking out loud. Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what else is alive for you, Peter? What what else is alive for you right now? Well, my nose. Mm. Yeah. So uh, I had to, yesterday, I had to go and get some uh, cortical steroids or, you know, 
like uh i don't know what cortico means like cortisone based yeah mm -hmm. cortisone based uh, yeah um for for my nose in an inhaler called sinu sinu flow is it sinu flow yeah i think that's the one and uh i was very afraid of using any drugs because i'm afraid of the rebound mm -hmm. symptoms like getting more congestion after the quarters of the, the steroid wears off. But I slept for a whole week without my nose working, just mouth breathing. And after that week, uh, my lymph nodes are swollen and sore. Mm -hmm. um, I feel my tongue dragging in my throat more. Um, I feel sick. Uh, I feel awful. And a lot of that is psychosomatic because of what I know about mouth breathing. And so that's compounding the, uh, the, the symptoms even more and bringing up a lot of old anger. And my, uh, my, my coach, kinesiologist buddy, I, I haven't said his name on here just because I'm afraid of saying something that may offend a professional person and say don't talk about me on your weird spongebob fucking show right so i i haven't i'm not comfortable yet saying his name anyway but um he told me that oh well, i went in there yesterday he says what's coming up just like you said and i said well i'm angry and um uh, because i feel stupid <laughs> he goes okay let's talk about that and i'm i'm angry because i can't breathe through my flipping nose when i sleep and when I wake up in the morning, I feel stupid, right? Because my, my, my higher brain goes offline. Uh, it's a spectrum, obviously. But, you know, my primitive caveman brain is the only thing ticking over, really, keeping me going, breathing through the night. And it's not this intelligent, higher level, deep sleep uh, that is not traumatic, traumatizing airways and inflaming lymph nodes and letting in invasive things into my system. Right. It's like, I feel awful, dude. And, uh, so I, I had to, well, we could talk about all the anger issues and why it makes me angry, but, um, I, I had to go and get some, some, uh, sinu flow nasi flow <laughs> i don't know what it's called so i got some antihistamines because i didn't know if it was an allergic thing uh with this rhinitis i've got right and uh but i needed anything to, to unblock my nose so that i could get asleep without breathing through my mouth and so last night was the first night in a week that i've been able to keep breathing through my nose mm -hmm. and i had to you know just keep squirting this stuff up in my nose and i don't know what the long-term side effects or short-term side effects are going to be but in my mind whatever it takes to get my nose working at night is going to be better than suffering all the symptoms of mouth breathing and so i guess it's a really good reminder that i'm not just talking shit when i you know talk down my nose at my friends and go i take my mouth shut at night because oh, you oh i'm better you know, it's like, yeah, it actually, it actually is some serious shit. Mouth breathing at night is so bad for me. And I'm really having to remember that now firsthand, go through it again, all over again, all that stuff. I thought I left behind, you know, all that it's bringing up all these old things, hangovers, um, not wanting to get out of bed, feeling like a loser, feeling stupid. All because of a night of mouth breathing, bringing up all this old, old stuff. So I guess it's, it's a purpose for me to look at it again. And, uh, but, um, so it, it was a sign you flow. It sure worked. It worked really well. <laughs> so obviously that's not the, the best practice, but I don't know what else to do. You know, I, I've tried doing the, I'm, really, really, really. I'm not going to do that all night long. That only lasts for five minutes before it blocks up again. And then there's this one I've heard where you can press this bone here that helps flush stuff. And that works temporarily. Um, and then what else did I try? Of course, I'm using my 
uh, neti pot every day, faithfully, you know, always flushing my nose out. Um, you know, there was the ketamine a little while ago that could have triggered some irritation in my nose from snorting ketamine. <laughs> Guilty, <laughs> right? So I think what I'm going to try and do is rig up this uh, nasal thing, uh, the, 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 the sine flow. Once it's empty, I'm going to try mixing ketamine and, and, and salt water in there. The next time I want to do what, which is, you know, I've got, you know, this isn't a big part of my life, but when I want to go on a journey, a vision quest and use that, then maybe, I don't know how, how else to take, take ketamine, but I, I, I don't think that snorting stuff, you know, if we endanger our nose as breathwork people, like why would we ever put something up our nose? Like there's the, there's the rape, right? Or the hape mm -hmm. that, that, and I would be concerned that that would compromise my nasal passages. Oops. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I lost you there. Yeah. So anyway, I've had a bit of nose issues. It could have been due to past ketamine use. Um, it could be, you know, some sort of mold or allergen, but man, I can't imagine any worse torture right now than not being able to use our nose, you know? So, yeah. 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 I mean, it's just like they talked in breath by James Nestor when they did, when they did the mouth, the, oh, the nose the, taping. Oh, that's... when they did the nose, the nose blocking experiment, how their life went, it went down the drain. For a that's while. how I felt. I kept thinking about that part of the book. Yeah. Yeah it's it's torture it's like one it's it's like we said once you see the light just going yeah. back it's just oh it's just yeah. it's those reminders of like what it feel felt like when you were there and how, yeah. how far you went and it's just like oh yeah like my lips get all dry and cracked you know mm -hmm. and your mouth is all full of like sludge like that's torture breathing through your mouth at night is torture it's self-torture mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and like oh and the thing that i like too is it feels like every night i mouth tape i just have a good sleep and it's like i know what it's, i'm gonna feel like in the morning and mm -hmm. i can and i can be able to like even if i'm only getting six hours or if i'm getting eight hours or seven or five or like any mm -hmm. any amount like i know that at least the time i am sleeping i'm i'm breathing through my nose and i'm getting a, a good quality of sleep mm -hmm. Which that yeah. for me has been something like, I feel like before I used to, like, I felt like, I don't think I was a mouth breather all the time before I did mouth taping, but I definitely think there are some nights I was, or maybe for half the night I was, maybe half the night I wasn't, mm -hmm. but I would just like, you'd wake up and be like, what? Like, why don't I feel good? And then other mornings you feel great and you just don't know why, mm -hmm. but it's like, oh, it must be because I got like 10 hours of sleep. Like, yeah. And I need to get, and I, but then you get that sometimes you're like, why don't I feel good? And it's and it's very been interesting, like navigating that. Well, I think that a good direction to head for any breathwork people out there, uh, and this is a note to self, is coming up with a comprehensive first aid kit for clogged nose. Mm. You know? Wherever I go, I, I want to have a kit with me of decongestants, um, antihistamines, um, a little nasal flush bottle, some packets of salt, um, and maybe just a little, a little card with some simple rules on it of, okay, in case of emergency, um, try this exercise, that exercise, or just a protocol for blocked nose. You know, like if you're ever in a different country or, you know, you get sick all of a sudden, um, like what are the cutting edge techniques and all the ancient tricks in order to unblock a nose? Like, you know, I just I just want to make this comprehensive, super definitive guide to unclogging a nose instantly. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, because I looked, I, I was fumbling around. Trying, I didn't ask our teacher. Um, I wanted to do this myself. Um, but that's something that I think is worth exploring. Is, yeah. is ways to unclog a nose. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I think that's very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. Especially travel can bring up so many things with the nostril. Yeah. No matter, like some places where you are like just because of the humidity your nose will your nose will run or like or like it's blocked or then it's stuffy mm -hmm. or then it's just like you get a cold but i think that's a great idea like mm -hmm. in case of mouth breathing break break yes that's what i'm saying yeah mm -hmm. exactly man yeah awesome peter mm -hmm. awesome Mm, good old nose breathing. Uh, yeah. What do you got going on today? Well, today, um, I'm calling our teacher. After this, I'm calling him at one. We're gonna do a one, one on one. One Ooh. on one today. Yeah. So I'm Thanks. excited. And yeah. then something exciting actually I'm excited to say is I recently got a new job offer. Mm. Um, yeah. so you know, like the the sa the saunas and the cold plunges we used at the yeah. retreat. Yeah, Bioshack. Yeah, so the guy who runs it, he mm -hmm. he gave me a job offer to work at their brick and mortar location on the weekends. Okay, so making what are you gonna do? Well, okay, they have they have a physical brick and mortar location where they have an infrared sauna and a cold plunge and shower and like and like in a yoga studio. So basically, okay. I would I would do reception for them like. Like, like, okay. like invite, like, I guess, bring people in, yeah. clean up and do stuff like that. And okay. then as well as over time, I'd start doing like some Bioshack, like more of like the business parts or maybe, or like, Sweet. I got to talk, I got to talk with them today to sponsor see. <laughs> podcast sponsor. <laughs> yeah. Sponsor just announced right on. Cool. Yeah. I use their towel all the time. I do too. Yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> the peacock yep. feather in the towel. <laughs> sure, special issue collector's towel. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Mm. So I got that going on, and then I think I got I got to dive into some Watiko tonight. Oh shit! I got to dive into some Watiko. Then maybe yeah. then maybe a cold plunge. Maybe not. We'll see. What? Now. Yeah, we'll see. You now. haven't done it already. No. 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 Last no. night last night I had I had I had a late experience that, oh, that really? went late. Yeah. Oh. It's funny. When you were talking about with the with the K, I, I did it for the first time last night. And how did you take it? It's funny. I took it I took it like like the ch -ch. I took it that way. Was it in a sprayer? Yeah, it was. So it was mixed with liquid. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. It right. was great. I, it was yeah, great. Yeah. So it probably doesn't traumatize the nasal passages if it's in a liquid. Yeah. One other thing too is I have a buddy who who has used it quite a bit, and he says like, like with like the the snorting it, he can he gets yeah. scabs that build up in his nose. Yes. That's something with him. So and then and then it, he feels like he has to take more because his body doesn't receive it as well. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what one thing that he said for him. Uh -huh. So yeah, yeah, it was it was cool. It was it was a great experience. It's funny. Yeah. I it's funny during the experience. I was with some buddies, and we were playing some vi some video games. And then afterwards, I was like, I just need to dance right now. So I danced, and I was like, I need to lay down. And you know what I did, Peter? I was like, I'm gonna do some breath work. So I just did a breath of surrender practice, just chilling there. Right on. It Yo, was really. It was I'm really glad, nice. glad. Yeah, I don't. The video games is a little concerning. Yeah, I'll say like, yeah. I wanted to have reverence for it, and and I wanted, but I also wanted to like have a good like. But breath of surrender was nice. Like yeah. I understand that it's not in best case to use it in just like a social setting, like to almost like party or just or just hang out. But yeah, so. But it, I guess it was like I kind of wanted to just feel it a little bit and just yeah. spend time with buddies. But then it was like 
I, yeah. but then but then I had this big call. It's like I need to. I was like I need to lay down. I put my hood on my eyes, and I was like, I'm gonna do some breath. Yeah. Okay. Right. So then, so, so then I yeah. so then breath of surrender came through, and I was like, yeah, and it was it was really nice. That's great, man. So so can you tell us? I'm dying to know what young Jackson playing uh, video games on ketamine feel, feels like. <laughs> like. You know what happens. The way my buddy described it as well is the barrier between you and the character you're playing as kind of yeah. dissolves and you just become the character and and everything the character does you feel so much like yeah. and and it's weird like I didn't really know how much I was into it until you kind of stop playing for a second and you're like mm -hmm. and then and then you kind of look around and it was mm. and it but then it was it was good but then I felt like I I got really into it and I really felt into the state then I was mm. like, I can't play video games anymore. I need to dance. Well, yeah. actually, it took me a while to actually be able to get up. But once I was able to get up, then I was able to dance. And mm. then I and then I was just enjoying the feeling and just enjoying the dancing and enjoying just how, what was coming up. And then yeah. I was like, I need to lay down. And then breath of surrender. It was like because I feel like when I do my breath practices in the morning, I feel like it connects me with source. Yes. And I feel like it and I feel like a very connection with source and it feels very good. And it like mm -hmm. is it's a reminder. It's a reminder of spirit. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I was able to get that in that state with the breath practice, except it kind of went in a little different way. Like there it was slightly visual, not like a ton, but slightly visual. Mm -hmm. But and it was almost like some like I feel like in, in sober consciousness, sometimes like a lot of us put up walls between us and spirit. Mm -hmm. And through breath practice, it kind of just allows us to go and, and have a, a connection. But like there's like a certain level of connection, like say there's zero to 100 percent. There's like a scale. I was maybe like like say normal and say in like normal consciousness, sometimes people have a different time, a difficult time connecting that. But then during a breath practice, we know it's safe to we know we're in mm -hmm. a good state to we know that we can do it. So we're able to like bypass those like walls. But this, mm. it feels like it just felt almost like a little bit easier to get to that state because like mm. just because of the the K as well, it allowed me mm. to kind of like go that there a little bit more. And mm -hmm. that was nice. That was, yeah. and it just allowed me to just be in it. And I just, and I sat into it just after, and I really just sat with myself after the practice and just really was just like mm. thinking and just being, really just being. Mm. And that, that was really nice. What I feel like- again? We played Super Smash Brothers. Okay. So that's where, like, we were all just pl playing characters who were fighting against each other. And then afterward, they played Legend of Zelda. And okay, I just. Now there's a ketamine game. That's, like, that's the game my buddy likes playing it with. Cause he's yeah. like, myself and Link, we are the same. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like, yeah. I am. And, and he's like, and because what we did is we played that game so we could all play together. And then afterwards, when I kind of just, like, went on my own journey for a bit that's when they switched to zelda mm -hmm. and then after my breath journey i played i played some chess against a buddy mm -hmm. and then 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 we all just talked for a bit and that was nice yeah. cool cool and that was that was that was your first time trying it yeah that was my first time wow trying it. podcast ex podcast exclusive oh eh? i guess yeah, yeah. Wow. This, wow. This, this is a very no, podcast exclusive. no wonder we're talking about spongebob <laughs> yeah yeah we're both on drugs <laughs> no, actually i'm i haven't had a darn thing i haven't microdosed in a few days and it's been a while since i've uh, had the ketamine so um i think I, and i see this with my friends you know those friends i was talking about mm -hmm. a lot of them that i'm trying to let go but i still love that are still stuck in the a lot of them in the rave community right you know, the bass music festival scene. Mm -hmm. And I'm really hoping to bring um, to festivals. In fact, I may actually do this uh, this summer at Wicked Woods Festival in um, Radium Hot Springs or in Inver, Inver, uh, in something, you know, the Hot Springs, BC, you know, mm -hmm. Wicked Woods. Anyway, I want to start leading breath uh, journeys in the daytime um, at, at festivals. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, the reason I, I think I needed to to stop dabbling with the K and the reason why I see a lot of my friends become chronic daily, all day long users is that 
like you were saying with being connected to source um, through breath work, depending on where your mindset, the sentence setting of, of the use of K, personally, I found that it brought me into such a real experience of magic, you know, and, and not like mushrooms, but more so like you're saying, quit picking your nose, Jackson. I'm sorry. <laughs> Get that ketamine out of there. <laughs> um, uh, that's, I'll pick mine too, just so we're even. Look at that. <laughs> I can't breathe through my nose, guys. What's it that's gone? So, um, it, 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 uh, it's, it's, it becomes so real, like the, the dissolving of yourself, uh, the disassociation from yourself and becoming that video game character, you know, mm -hmm. it happens so seamlessly. Whereas I find with mushrooms, it's more of a, a tumultuous, um, dramatic, um, journey over a long period of time. That's kind of scary and emotional, but what K is like this? Some someone's giving you this science fiction theorem that they just sort of plug in and, and like morph like uh, the Matrix when he learns kung fu. It's just zoop, and all of a sudden you're locked into this complete other. I think it's a, a key to the multiverse. You know what I mean, mm. the, the the state we get into it, we can just at will access all these other places. And I, what I was going to wanted to say is that the use that I've seen a lot of my friends do and which I am concerned about myself doing is falling in love with that feeling. Like, mm. Oh, like life is, you know, this, this, this life is beautiful. There's blossoms all around me in Victoria right now. It's a nice day. The smells fresh. Let's go on. But, uh, you know, the allure and enchantment of stepping with one little, one little, one little <laughs> nasal inhalation there, we, we get, we can just be transported into that world. And, and I see so many people get, get stuck in that world and they can't get out. They don't want to get out of it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's, it's so, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit wary of that in, in myself yeah mm -hmm. when yeah. i go, go ahead on. No, no. um yeah it's like that's the big thing is i feel like it's just even <laughs> it's having like trying to find that reverence and like you say like with that magic serum like i since i'm young jackson as well and i i've lived a bit less life yep. i've i haven't yeah. known a lot of people to like I'm still pretty new to like the world of plant medicine and mm -hmm. I'm pretty new to the world of just even being around people who, who use any substances other than alcohol or marijuana. Mm. And, but I do, but I can see in people who have used like the ketamine, that's how they, how, they, like you say, how that it's like, it can be that magical thing and they just want to do it all of the time, all the time. Yeah, And it's, and it, it can be hard to like, put that stop so even like with myself when i when i tried it it was like okay this is cool but this it's cool for like special occasions where you're able to have great reverence for it but not mm. not all the time using it for the video game the video yeah. games and <laughs> and chess and talking and it's like that's that's a very like very use it very like sparingly and mm. with great reverence and i think mm. that's that's a good Oh, that's at least a good philosophy for me with it is like use it yeah. sparingly with great reverence and only in special occasions because mm -hmm. it can it can be that little water slide that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah wow fun yeah yeah mm -hmm. so that's what's up for me and now cool. now i gotta see i gotta talk with nature's fair because because nature's fair they don't really want to give me weekends off but I, I i would like to take a weekend job so we got to make a compromise now mm. So mm. we gotta we gotta figure out how to work with that yeah. but i have a plan i have a plan and a way of going about it mm -hmm. and i feel good about it okay so cool. yeah. yeah so thank you for asking peter right on man 
Yeah. Now, how are your personal assessments going? Your uh, clinical, you know, what are they called? Personal assessments, I guess. No, no, the, yeah, the, the, uh, do they have a word? I don't know what the name is. Anyways, your how, how are your assessments? Oh, case assessment? studies. Case studies. Yeah, there, I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit behind. They've been good. They've been good from when I've been able to do it. I'm a little yeah. bit behind. Though. Like I haven't dove too deep in. I've still <laughs> mainly been dabbling with the with the more of the basic techniques, and more and more of like the like the tests rather than yeah. going and like filling out the forms. Okay. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm a little so you, bit behind. So you do the CO2 uh, sensitivity, bolt mm -hmm. score, max exhale, and cadence. Yes. And and you're building a um, like a, a week by week, you know, repetitive thing with people. Have you seen people multiple times yet? I've had two different groups of people. Well, I have like one buddy and then a group with some other people. I've seen them. I've seen them once each. And then okay. I'm looking at like going and building that even more. My one buddy is going to Hawaii on Thursday, so I can't. I'm not going to be able to see him till he comes back. Mm -hmm. But but I guess I'll, I'll go from there. And yeah. and so I'm in I'm in the other space now too, where it felt like the people I chose they were interested like a little bit at first, but then they were kind of like interested in just that little bit. But they I don't yeah. think they were really interested in working with that over time. Okay. So I'm I'm working right now, and I think I'm going to talk with Jeff a lot about this today too. Yeah. Is as I'm going to talk about finding those people who are who like want to get into it week after week, and I think I I think I need it'll be nice to have the conversation so I can get a little bit more accountability too, because mm -hmm. I've been I've been going with it, but I'm I'm kind of trailing behind a little bit. So I feel like this is going to be a good time to refocus myself to risk. So that way, like instead of doing like all the other things, like the cold exposure, the group activities, like I feel like I got to come back to remember that I'm a student. Mm -hmm. I got to make sure I do my homework. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah. How about you, Peter? How's your assessments been? Good. I did one this morning and I'm doing one in uh, at three o'clock. Uh, yeah. So I got a couple hours still. And the th third one, the, the three o'clock one is a repeat customer. She's a, she's a singer. And mm. so she sings in a choir and I'm going to do the Carl Stow treatment on her, which from the breath book was the choir, eccentric choir instructor that um, was curing people, helping oh. them uh, recover from emphysema and um, helping cho choralists, choralists. Sing, what are choir singers called? Anyways, helping them get longer notes like, so by, by teaching them the power of a full exhale, I believe was his thing. Mm. So, so the work we're doing, we started with the, the CO2 sensitivity and max exhale and cadence. And now what, what, what I'm going to do this repeat visit is see i gave her some exercises to do to see if she could lengthen her exhale and i'm, I'm wanting to see if like carl stow i can get her singing longer without having to take breaths and see if it improves her vocal range or at all you know yeah cool so i'm excited for that because that's my first person that i've been able to go beyond just okay our teacher said to do this it's supposed to be good for that how do you feel? Okay, thanks. <laughs> now it's going to be like, how's your singing? Can we make your singing better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a real, there's a real reason why behind yeah. going on the journey. There's, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then there's another guy who, who it's actually her, her, her ex-husband. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, he, um, we went to a comedy show the other night. And I uh, went and uh, had uh, some chicken with him and his, his new lady. And um, he suffers from Crohn's. Mm -hmm. Also irritable bowel, that kind of stuff, which if I understand correctly, those are autoimmune diseases, are they? Uh, but any, anyhow. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> we're not doctors. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, but I believe from what we've learned that breathing can greatly alleviate a lot of the symptoms of things like Crohn's. And so when we did these exercises with him, we discovered that he's breathing backwards. Oh. So his diaphragm, because he's so afraid of disturbing his bowels and he's so afraid of, you know, like, shitting himself or, or something i don't know uh, um i know the feeling i guess he's he's shying away from pushing his diaphragm deep down and squishing his 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 bowels and his his innards his his, his organs his guts mm -hmm. right so he's when he breathes in he's sucking his diaphragm up no diaphragmatic breathing at all so mm -hmm. with him i haven't seen him again yet but I'm tr trying to figure out a way to give him exercises to slowly get him to feel safe enough to push his diaphragm down when he breathes in instead of like delicately pulling it away from his guts, mm -hmm. you know? Mm, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, the guy is OCD as a motherfucker. Mm. <laughs> like, like, like oh, so OCD, right? Real, real legit OCD, like attention deficit and all of that. Mm -hmm. Always has to be fussing with something, always shifting to different things, super bad Crohn's. Um, and I really think that if we can get his diaphragm engaging and, and um, that we can slowly alleviate some of that, um, that Crohn's and, uh, yeah. So there's a real case study. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's so yeah, beautiful. man. That's awesome. I'm really happy yeah. with you, Peter, that you've been able to work with him too. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I've awesome. uh, got, got another person. I guess as, as people, we're not supposed to share pe uh, private stuff about our patients. <laughs> this is as unprivate as you get. But but uh, we're not naming names. So the other person, um, I guess, you know, we'll come a lot up against this a lot is smokers and how smokers, once they start to do big breathing, deep breathing, um, it brings up all the, the issues they have with from smoking. And then there's something to get through. So what is a good protocol as a breathwork guide for, for smokers, you know, mm -hmm. like. So we need the break in case of emergency nose breathing kit. We also need the um, protocol on how to um, help lifetime smokers learn to breathe again without bringing them hard up against all these dysfunctions and discouraging them. Mm -hmm. Because because this person got was like, we did the cadence and she got to seven and was like, oh, oh my neck. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know yes so yeah yeah um anything else i could share about the uh case studies well another guy can barely he's got crazy sleep apnea so he's sleeping terribly and uh so i'm trying to figure out ways of of helping him with that basically with him it's like all right you're gonna have to start using a nasal flush neti pot thing first of all mm -hmm. uh, see see what happens because like like how do you tell people to breathe through their nose if the nose doesn't work like well come back when it works sorry mm -hmm. <laughs> you know i need more i need more need more answers yes yeah yeah well that's awesome well, Peter, I gotta, I gotta get going. Oh, gotta, you too. I gotta call in two minutes. Oh, That's... right, two minutes. Yeah. Oh shit! All right, peace out. But say, thank say you so up, much. Say what up to teach you for me. Thank you. Friend, yam. I will. Yeah. The, what should we call the episode though? We could call it. We could call it either like the new age and coming up for it. We could call it bikini bottom breath work. Sure. Okay. Done. Bikini okay. bottom breath work. Okay. okay. Adios, Peter. Thank you so much for today. Good this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> hey!
<laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, have a good one, Peter. Okay, good.